Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, second episode of Dinosaur Days. Um, this episode is going to be about Ceratopsians and really there's a couple of problems I have with how Ceratopsians are depicted in modern um, media, books, movies, even like on the Discovery Channel and what have you because a lot of it just isn't true. Um, like, the idea that you had Triceratops roaming around like cattle, walking upright completely, running around um, like cattle or elephants or something. Um, the skeletal structure of a Triceratops, or any Ceratopsian for that matter, is configured in a way to where if they were running or walking in that type of motion, their shoulder blade, their clavicle would come up and just or scapula, I mean, sorry, their scapula would come up and cut off the circulation to their brain. And, I mean, if you're cutting off the circulation to your brain, you're gonna pass out, and that's not very practical, especially if you're trying to get away from, say, something like a predator. Um, basically, it's just, it's just wrong. And, um, Earlier depictions of Triceratops are more accurate. They weren't completely sprawled out like a lizard. I have a picture of a Komodo dragon because that shows more like how they would have been. But this drawing of um, bones that didn't get completely ported into the slideshow, this isn't the best slideshow presentation um, program, but there's an image below that that shows kind of a somewhat, you know, erect posture for dinosaurs. And for bipedal dinosaurs, that is accurate. They st stood erect. Um, or not erect, but they had their their femur bones directly underneath the mass of their body, pretty much like mammals do. Um, especially humans. Their their gait for bipedal dinosaurs was almost exactly like humans. And um, I'll I'll talk about that in a, in a later episode. Um, Ceratopsians, as you can see, are one of the most diverse dinosaur clades and so I wanted to talk about them early on and give them an appropriate amount of attention because you see all these depictions of these different ceratopsians and all of them probably had a very similar skeletal design and so and so when I say they had a more sprawled gait they probably moved more like a reptile I generally apply that to all ceratopsians and and that's just because they were so similar morphologically, for the most part. Like, Cetacosaurus here um, was different, he was bipedal, and that's generally accepted to be the basal Ceratopsian. Um, but for the rest of the, the quadrupedal, large Ceratopsians, they probably had a more spread out gait. And, and this is supported not only in their skeletal structure, but there are trackways of Ceratopsians where you can see their movement was more of this of this style, um, where it was it would have been more awkward to watch him move around than than uh, comparing him to something like a cow. And and some people think that comparing dinosaurs to reptiles makes them less interesting, but I think it makes them actually more interesting because it makes them more different, and they were a lot more different than the mammals um, in a lot of ways. And I'll talk about some of the ways they were different when I talked about the other dinosaur groups and, and things like that, but, um, and really, um, another problem I have with the Ceratopsian modern depiction is the herd concept, which, don't get me wrong, there are mass bone beds of Ceratopsians, and they were likely pretty much all herd animals, however, the idea that you had young ceratopsians with old ceratopsians doesn't make much sense because when you get baby triceratops and other baby ceratopsians, especially newborns, they would have been really small compared to these very giant adults that would have been producing them. And so the idea of, you know, a herd of giant ceratopsians with babies, I mean, if you think about it, how easy would it be for those big herds of giant animals to step on the babies? I mean, or something of that nature. Very easy. And especially for how small these things were when they first hatched. And um, 
For that reason, it's a lot more likely that the herds were made up of related animals, maybe even, maybe even, um, same clutches of eggs, um, or eggs that at least hatched at the same time. Because there is safety in numbers, and like I said, uh, Ceratopsians were almost certainly, uh, herd animals and, and social animals. Um, gregarious would be the term for that. Um, another point I want to make is there's a world map here with dots, and um, what the dots represent is Ceratopsians of different geologic age, and their discoveries on, on the continents. And if you look at that, you can see they had almost a global distribution, not quite global. There were a couple areas like Africa where, where there have been none found. And that doesn't mean they weren't there, it just means that to date there have been no Ceratopsians discovered there for whatever reason. Um, and it could be that they just weren't um, suited for that climate when, you know, the continents had a different configuration, or there's a lot of regulations out there that, that restrict uh, paleontologists from digging in certain areas, and so that could be it too. Um, I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. Um, another point I wanted to make was the quill-like structures on the Cetacosaurus skeleton um, that you can see as, as this goes through. Um, I'll try pointing it out when it comes up, but a lot of what is seen as feathers in dinosaurs might actually be decomposing collagen fiber. And I'm not going to go too much into detail with this because I'm going to do another episode where I talk about this in more detail, but here's here's the picture I'm talking about. Um, and with this, I think that at least the Tachosaurus had quills, and, and there's people who, who think that larger ceratopsians might have also had quills like that, but that I'm not so sure about. Um, the reason I'm going to go ahead and say that the Cetacosaurus quills were probably just that is because, or at least uh, fiber-like structures, is because this is preserved skin on the fossil, and those structures are coming out of the skin, obviously sticking out of it. Um, and so, with some of the other dinosaur fossils that they say have feathers or whatever, it's not really clear what's going on with that. Um, and so yes, the like, Cetacosaurus, the basal ceratopsian, probably did. The larger ones I'm not so sure about. Um, this will likely be a two-part episode, um, because there are some other things I want to talk about too, but um, for right now, I'm going to say thank you for watching. I will try to get the second part of this episode back on as soon as possible. Please like and subscribe.